Well, good morning. Welcome to Thrive Church. If this is your very first time with us, we'd like to welcome you here. For those of you that might not know me, I'm Judah Thomas, lead pastor here at Thrive, and we are so excited about what God has been doing in our church. And, uh, and as Carrie uh, mentioned, we are having that prayer event next Sunday, and I'd like to personally invite you to come. It's uh, a part of this bigger organization, and we're going to be partnering with some of the, the local churches here in town to host a time of praying for, for our state and for the people in it. And on that handout, it also has a prayer guide for these 10 days of prayer and give you some ideas of some things that you can be praying about. So we're starting this brand new series today called Three Little Words. And uh, I'm going to give you a little bit uh, of the backstory of why I came up with this and, and why I feel like it's important to, to teach about at this point in time. You know, we're nearing our third anniversary as a church, and usually around this time, I try to preach a series that has to do with uh, the, the kind of the bigger picture of why we do what we do, uh, the, the vision, the mission of Thrive. And last year, one of the things that I felt was, was really important for where we're going is these three directions that we need to move as a church and move as individuals. It was moving up in and out. And, and we move up with our relationship with God. We move in closer together with each other in community. And we move out in serving the rest of the world. And, and as I kind of di was digging deeper into these things and pondering these things, um, there was a verse that kind of popped into my mind. And, and it had to do with this. And, and I was reminded of this verse, and it's, it's a very common verse. It comes from a chapter in the Bible everybody calls the love chapter. In fact, people like to read this at weddings because it's about love and it's just all this, this mushy stuff. And at the end, it has this final verse in 1 Corinthians 13, 13. And he says, three things will last forever. And we want things that'll last forever, don't we? We want, we want something that, that we can really you know, put our faith and our trust on. We want something that's going to last forever. He says, three things will last forever. What's those three things? Faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these is Love, right? So usually when we read this verse, we're like, we kind of blow by the first part. And these three things last forever, faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these is love. And we focus on love because this is the love chapter after all. We read it at weddings. And, and, and as I started to, to ponder this verse a little bit, I realized that it's not just talking about love. That it's saying that, that love is the priority, but it's giving two other things that are important that will also last forever. And I felt like God was beginning to show me that as a church, we need to be displaying these things and that, that everyone that comes in, we need to help to build these three things into their life. And that me as an individual and you as an individual, we need to embrace these three little words, faith, hope, and love. As a church, when, when people come, well, that's one of our goals is to, to help your faith to increase, to help you to grow in your faith in Christ. But the next one is important, too. Many people come from all walks of life struggling with all kinds of things, addictions and, and depression and anxieties. And it's our prayer and our hope that when people leave here, that they'll have a little bit more hope than when they walked in. And then finally, love. The greatest of these is love, and we'll, we'll, that'll be our final week on this, talking about love. And, and love, it, it's our heart that everybody that comes in the doors at Thrive will experience love and compassion and community. In fact, every morning uh, before church, we have a gathering where we pray over the services and over you that will be coming here. And one thing that I always challenge the people that are here is I say, don't forget to show love to every person that comes in, whether they've come in for the first time or the 101st time, we want to show them God's love. So these three things will last forever. These three things, faith, hope, and love. And so these are the three things that we want to do for every person. And in your notes, jot this down, that God wants us 
to grow in these three areas. He wants me to grow in my faith. He wants me to have more hope for the future. And he wants me to grow and love. And he wants us to give that to other people that we come in contact with. How are you helping someone else's faith to grow? How are you giving more hope? You, you probably know people like that, right? That when you talk to them, you feel like you have more hope. And there's other people you talk to and they just, they're like, they like suck the hope out of you, right? You're like, I got this idea. Like, you can't do that. Like, oh, okay. And, and, and they, they just suck the life. They suck the hope out of you. Well, I want us to be people that give hope. And then ultimately that we show people God's love. So this week's focus will be on faith. We hear the word faith a lot, right? Keep the faith. Keep the faith. What, what does that mean? I don't know. It probably means different things to different people. It means, you know, stay, stay strong in your faith. Whatever it may be, keep the faith. We talk about a person of faith, kind of like it's an ethnicity. Oh, you know, there's, there, oh, he, he's a person of faith. And, and oh, well, she's a Chinese and he's a Mexican. And, and oh, oh, she's a person of faith. And we talk about person of faith, but what does that even mean? I mean, there's an assumption that a, that a person of faith maybe has faith as a priority in their life, but we don't really know what, what kind of faith it is or who it's in. We talk about organizations that are faith-based organizations, and, and, and we have the assumption that maybe they, you know, put God first or they put some belief system uh, over just profits, but we're going to look at what Scripture says faith is all about. We're going to look in uh, Hebrews chapter 11. 1. Now, before we read this, I'm just going to take a rabbit trail here. I, I love coffee. In fact, you might know it, not know this, but when you come to Thrive and you drink coffee here, that coffee was roasted here on the property, okay? We buy the green beans. We roast them. We have nitro-infused cold brew on tap. We love coffee. I believe God loves coffee for this very reason, because because. Here in this verse is Hebrews, right? So Hebrews coffee. So God loves coffee. We love coffee. This is why we do something. I mean, why do you care about coffee? Well, because Hebrews. So we're going to brew the best coffee we possibly can. So some of you are going to get that in like 10 minutes. Like, what the heck was he talking about coffee for? So Hebrews at 11 verse 1. It says, now faith is what? Confidence. Underline that word confidence. It's confidence. I'm confident. I'm secure. I, I'm standing strong, standing firm. Now, faith is confidence in what I hope for. It's confidence in what I hope for. And it goes on and says, and it's the assurance about what we do not see. Assurance of what we do not see. In your notes, jot this down. That faith is being confident that what we hope for will actually happen. Now, now, let me just qualify this. This doesn't mean every single thing in your life. You're like, I am confident that I'm going to win the lottery. Okay, let me just tell you, you're not going to win. Okay, the odds are stacked against you. You're probably not going to win it. But faith is being confident, though, that what we hope for will actually happen, being sure about things that we can't see. I used to fly uh, small airplanes a fair amount. And, and, and there's nothing like being in a small airplane, flying around, looking at the, the landscape and the scenery. And out of all the times that I've flown in a small little Cessna or whatever, I've never been able to see the air that is actually holding the airplane up. But I have a faith, even though I can't see it, that, that through the aerodynamics of the wing, that the wind that's flowing over and below the wing, that it's generating a force called lift that allows the airplane to rise above this thing that's invisible. So I have faith in something. I, I'm, being, I'm sure about something that I can't see. It's like, like our heart that we have. Or, or how about this? How about your brain? Has anybody ever seen, I mean, have you ever seen your own brain before? Anybody? No, we, we haven't seen our own brain before. I mean, like, like out of our skull, like, oh, that's what it looks like. We've not seen our own brain, but how many of us believe that there actually is one in there? Some of you. Now, I didn't ask, do you believe that your spouse has one? You know, I said, how many do you believe that you have one? Now, some of our brains don't work as well as others. Some of us still make dumb choices. We still do all kinds of things. Some people might not think that you have a brain, 
But I'm pretty sure if you're here with us today that you have a brain. I can't see it though, but I still believe it. Not being able to see something doesn't mean that it doesn't exist. So here's a couple things that faith is not. Faith isn't expecting something to happen because I convince myself that it will. It's, it's not, oh, oh I'm, I'm convinced that, it, I'm, I'm convinced that if, if I buy a lottery ticket every single day, eventually I'm going to hit it big, baby. No, you're not going to hit it big. Oh, it doesn't matter how convinced you are of it. The odds are stacked against you. They already say, oh, it's just been a rough year this year, but I have faith that it's going to get better. Why? What are you doing to make it better? Well, nothing. I just, I just think it's going to get better. I'm not talking about putting our, our faith in, in abstract things. Write this in your notes that, that faith is patience with mystery. Patience with mystery. I'm not sure of the outcome. I'm not sure what God is going to do in this situation. I'm not sure how he's going to get me through this. But I'm patient to see. And I have faith in him that even when I don't know the outcome, I have faith that I know the one that does control the outcome. So faith in what? Faith in what do we have faith in? You know, many people have had very, very strong faith in thin ice and never lived to tell the tale. Oh, I got a lot of faith that ice is going to hold me. Oh, we could drive our truck out on that ice. It's so, it's so good and thick. And you drive out there and guess what? Your faith was misplaced. Your faith shouldn't have been in the thin ice. So one of the most important benefits of faith is salvation. It's, it's the ability to, to be made right with God. It's, our faith is based on the, the resurrection of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Back in, in Hebrews, a, f- a few verses down now, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, it says, it is what? Impossible. It is impossible. Come on, I can't hear you guys. It's what? Impossible to please God without what? faith. It's impossible. It can't be done. You're not going to be able to please God if you don't have faith in your life. If you don't have faith, you can't please him. It's impossible. You can't do it. He goes on to say anyone who wants to come to him must believe. You must have faith. You must trust that God exists and that he rewards those who sincerely seek him. Do you believe that God exists? Do you believe that that God rewards you? This is where we put our faith. God is where we put our faith and our trust and our hope. I believe that not only does he exist, but that he's going to reward me for seeking him. It's important to know who we have our faith in. You know, and you notice, write this down. We all have faith in something, don't we? Every single one of us, we all have faith in something. In fact, most of you today got here probably in a car. And there was a certain level of faith that when you got in that car and you put your key in the ignition, some of you are like, key in an ignition? I got a little button or, you know. When I was growing up, cars had keys and you put it in the little thing and you twist it. I don't know how your car starts. Maybe you push a button, I don't know. But we have a certain level of faith that when I do whatever it requires to start this thing, that it's going to crank up and I'm going to be able to accelerate this and it's going to take me wherever I go, right? We have that certain level of faith. But from time to time, if you're someone like myself who does not always make the highest priority car maintenance, and at some point in time you get in there and you do what you've always did with the same amount of faith and it doesn't work, right? The the car doesn't turn over, it doesn't start, something's wrong, there's a problem here. But we have faith, we have faith that, oh, my car is gonna, gonna start. Atheists, people that don't believe in God, They have faith. Did you know that it takes faith to be an atheist? Maybe you've been an atheist. Maybe you are one now. Maybe you know someone that is. You know, it takes a huge amount of faith to be an atheist. I mean, because you're 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 making certain statements of faith. I believe I have faith that there is no God. That's where I'm putting my faith. I have faith that there is no afterlife. There's no life after death here. I have faith in that. I have faith that there is no consequence for my sin. I can do whatever I want and I'm not going to get in trouble for it. I'm not going to be held accountable 
for it. It takes a huge amount of faith to be an atheist. We have a certain amount of faith in our doctors, don't we? You go to the doctor, they say, oh, some, something's wrong with you. You know, you've got this problem. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to prescribe a medication for you. So then they, they take the medication and they send it over to the pharmacist. And by some miracle, unbeknownst to me, the pharmacist is able to translate the scribbles on a piece of paper. And I have faith that they're going to do it accurately. And then they give me a bottle of something in there. And they say, take two of these a day. And I have faith that they gave me the right thing and the right dosage. And I have faith that when I take this, it'll make me better. I don't understand all that's making this happen, but I have faith in a doctor. But do we have faith in an almighty God? Another thing that faith is not is faith isn't a tool just to make something happen. Oh, I have faith that this is going to happen. I, I have faith in, in this. I, I have faith that God, he's just going to give me everything I want. You know, years ago, there was a lot of churches and people that preached this, and they kind of had this slang term for it. It was called the name it, claim it movement. And people say, oh, all you got to do is say what you want, and you claim it by faith, and it'll happen. Or people called it Cadillac faith. Cadillac faith was, God, I'm believing that you're going to provide me with a pink Cadillac. And God's like, I ain't giving you no pink Cadillac. And we're like, no, but I'm naming it and I'm claiming it. I'm claiming it because scripture says you may ask for anything you want and it'll be granted. So God, give me a pink Cadillac. And God's like, I ain't giving you a pink Cadillac. But, but, but the scripture says you may ask for anything you want and it'll be granted. Maybe you've heard people say things similar. Like, All you got to do is ask and he'll give it to you. The problem is they're not reading the entire verse here. And John 15, 7 says, but if you do what? Remain in me and my words remain in you. Then you may ask for anything you want and it'll be granted. See, there's a condition to the promise. It's not just saying ask for anything you want. Ask for a pink Cadillac and you're going to wake up the next morning and there's going to be a pink Cadillac in your driveway. No, it's saying if you remain in me, if you have a relationship with me, you put your faith and trust and hope in me and my words, my scripture, my teachings are in you. In other words, saying when you're so close to God that your will and his will become one, that now you're asking for things that already line up with his will for you. And at that point, I can ask for anything and it'll be granted. Another thing that faith is not is faith is not a feeling or an emotion. Faith isn't a feeling. Or an emotion, we say, oh, I just don't feel like I have faith. Sometimes maybe you wake up in the morning and say, I don't feel a lot of faith right now. Or you had a hard day. I don't feel very much faith right now. God's word says that the faith is, is not a feeling. It's not an emotion. In your notes, jot this down, that I don't need to feel faith to have faith. I don't need to feel it to have it. Because some days you might not feel it. I've been in, in ministry for years and years, and sometimes people will come up after a service and they'll say something like, um, well, God really showed up today. I'm like, did he now? Where was he before that? Before he showed up, where was he at that point in time? Or saying, you know, you know, I was here today and I just didn't feel God's presence. I didn't feel like he showed up. Like, really? Well, that's a problem now because God isn't going to be here if you don't feel him here. And, and somehow we base, we think that, that God's presence is dependent on my feeling. Well, guess what, folks? I have faith that he is already here whether I feel it or not. I don't need to feel his presence in order for him to be here because his presence doesn't depend on my feelings. It depends on his promises. And, 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 and I think what happens, people say, oh, I hope God shows up today. God, please show up today. And I think a more accurate prayer is, is saying, God, help me to realize, to recognize, to notice your presence that's already here. Because I know that you're here with me already. As it says in Psalm 23, verse 4, it says, even though I go through the darkest valley, 
I will fear no danger. Why won't I fear danger? Why won't I fear? For you are with me. I don't need to fear danger because I know you're with me. I don't need to feel your presence to know that you're with me. I don't need to have the warm fuzzies to know that you're with me. I don't need to have goosebumps to know that your presence is here. Because I believe I have faith that you're here with me regardless of whether I feel it or not. I don't need to feel it to believe it. I don't need to feel forgiven to know that I am forgiven. Some people say, well, I asked God to forgive me, but I still have all this guilt. I don't feel like I'm forgiven. Well, aren't you glad that your forgiveness isn't based on how you feel? God says you are forgiven. You don't need to feel it. You might say, well, I have all these needs and I feel like God's not going to provide for me. Well, he can provide for you even if you don't feel like he can. We pray and say, I just feel I feel like God doesn't hear my prayers. I feel like I'm just saying words and they're just bouncing right back to me. Well, you know, God can hear your words even when you don't feel like he can. He's still there. I have faith that he can hear me. I have faith. Now, I wonder, raise your hand real quick, if you've ever wrestled with any kind of doubt before. Any doubt? Okay, now keep your hand up for a second. Look around. See, like you're not the only one. Okay, put your hand down. We've all wrestled with doubt. But I've heard people talk about like, well, if you doubt God, he's not going to do anything for you. Or, or God's not going to heal you because you got some doubt in your life. And, and we get all freaked out about doubt. We all wrestle with it, though. If you don't wrestle with it, or if you say, oh, I don't, I've never had doubt, you're lying to yourself because we all do. In fact, there was a, a miracle that Jesus performed that I think explains this so nicely. And, and there was a, a boy, and he was being attacked by evil spirits. He was having this problem where he would throw himself into the fire. He was convulsing. He was having all these issues. And as a father, the father wants nothing more than for his son, his child, to be physically and emotionally well. And so he brings his son to Jesus and says, help me, Jesus, heal my son if you can. Heal him if you can. So what does Jesus say? Oh, if I get, get lost, I'm not going to talk to you. I want to talk to people that have faith. No, he, listen to what he says in Mark 9, 23. He says, what do you mean, if I can, Jesus asked. Anything's possible if a person believes. In this next verse, this is something that I've prayed before in my life. And maybe as you see this, this is something that you can pray in your life with the difficulties and the things that you face in your life. Listen to this prayer that he says. Listen to what he calls us as the father instantly cried out. I do believe, but help me overcome my unbelief. I do believe, but I got a little bit of doubt in here too. Lord, I, I do believe, but help me to overcome this doubt. And you know what Jesus did? He went and healed the son anyway. Even though this man had some doubt, he healed him anyway. We look, look at Peter. Peter is, is in a boat and Jesus comes walking on the water and Peter's like, hey, I want to try that. And he jumps out of the boat and he starts walking. But as he's walking, he notices the wind and the waves and Peter sinks and Jesus reaches out his hand and pulls Peter up and says, why did you have such little faith? But he still performed a miracle there. He still got to walk on the water. There's another guy and he gets a, a bad reputation and it's very personal to me because my last name is Thomas and there's a guy in the Bible, his name was Thomas too. And people are like, so are you the doubting Thomas? And I'm like, you know what? Sometimes I am. Sometimes I do doubt. And what happened with Thomas is Jesus, he died on the cross, he rose again. Everybody said, Jesus is alive and Thomas sits back and says, I'm not going to believe it until I see and feel the holes that were in his hand and see the, the, these scars and these wounds. And everybody said, like, look at Thomas. He didn't believe. I would have believed. I don't know that you would have believed. I don't know that I would have believed if people say, oh, he's alive, he's alive. And what does Jesus do? Jesus shows up to him and says, hey, Thomas, look, look, here's the holes. Here's the wound. So now you can believe. But you know what's even better than that, he says? He says, but it's even better for those that haven't seen that still believe. Thomas was a little skeptical. He had a little bit of doubt. But you know what? I can have faith in God in spite of a little bit of doubt. 
I might have a little bit of doubt in my life, but that doesn't counteract my faith in God. Because we say, well, what's the opposite of faith? Doubt must be the opposite of faith. No, write this in your notes. The presence of doubt does not indicate the absence of faith. Just because I have doubt doesn't mean that I don't have faith. See, the opposite of faith is not doubt. The opposite of faith is certainty. It's I want to be certain about everything in my life. I want to have control over everything in my life. I don't want to trust in God. I want to trust in myself. I don't want to have faith in him. I want to have faith in my own skills and abilities. I want to have certainty. I want to have certainty in my job. I want to have certainty in my relationships. I want to have certainty in my, in my own health because then it doesn't require faith. It's like, why did Jesus tell the rich man that it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than a rich person to enter the kingdom of God? Because a rich person, which we all are, often don't realize that we need to still have faith in God. Because like, well, I can provide for myself. I don't need God. And we forget that God is the one that provided for us to begin with. But they think that they don't need faith. But in 2 Corinthians 5, 7, it says, we walk by what? Faith, not by sight. We walk by faith. I don't need to see it to believe it. I don't have everything figured out because if I had everything in my life figured out, I wouldn't need faith. I don't have it figured out, but I know who does have it figured out. I don't have all the problems, the solutions for all the problems that I face, but I know who does have the solutions to those problems. See, having faith in God doesn't mean that the rain won't come, but it means that we're going to get to the other side of the storm. Regardless of, of the problems that I face in my life, I can have faith even in the storm. I have faith that God is able. I have faith that God is here with me right now. I have faith that God is powerful. I have faith that God is providing for me. I have faith that God is comforting me. I have faith that God is guiding me. Even when I don't feel like it, I have faith that he's there doing that. Because in your notes, right, that faith works best in times of uncertainty. You ever been uncertain about something before? Like, I just don't know how this is all going to turn out. I don't know how this relationship's going to turn out. I don't know how my grades are all going to turn out. I don't know if I'm going to get the career that I want. I don't know how, how all the situation in my life is going to turn out. I just don't know. But in those times of uncertainty, those times of uncertainty test and strengthen our faith. See, when we have doubt, it doesn't show that we don't have faith. It just shows that our faith muscle is not exercised properly. You know, I get together with a bunch of guys and we arm wrestle and, and, and we do things. And, and from time to time, somebody will have like a big chunk of steel or, or something. They'll like say, hey, can you pick that up? And it's like, I doubt it. I don't think I can. But you know something, even if you can't pick it up, what would enable you to pick that up? Exercise, practice, working with it, working with lighter weights. And, and as you're doing that, your muscles are getting stronger. We need to have faith that works even when the situations of our life are not cooperating. Because see, faith allows me to look at those situations differently than I would on my own. Because I don't look at it like, how am I going to fix this? I look at it like, how is God going to fix this? How is he going to help me in this situation? In your notes, write down that, you know, some people's faith is like fine china. And they only break it out for special occasions. I wonder, do you have fine china? When, when do you break it out? We break it out when, when friends are coming over, maybe. Some people, they only break it out for Christmas and Easter. And I wonder, is our faith like fine china? We only break it out when, when other people are around. Maybe we'll break it out on Sunday morning. Some of us, we do only break it out for Christmas and Easter. You know, and this is not the kind of faith that I want. I don't want to have the kind of faith that I'm only breaking out on special occasions. I want some paper plate faith. You know what I'm talking about? The kind of faith that says, I'm going to use this day in and day out. Uh, you need another one, have another one, have another one. We got plenty of them to go around. That's the kind of faith that I want. I want to have the kind of faith that I'm not just taking it out for special times, special occasions, Christmas and Easter, Sundays, and when other people are around so that they think that I'm better than who I really am. 
I want to have that paper plate faith. I want to have the kind of faith that can get me moving on Monday morning, that'll get me through Tuesday, that'll help me win on Wednesday, that'll keep me from getting tired on Thursday, that'll help me fight on Friday, the kind that'll help me to serve other people on Saturday and sing his praise on Sunday, even when I don't feel like it. That's the kind of faith that I want. Faith that, that works day in and day out. So I just don't have that much faith. Well, you don't need much. Scripture says that even if you only have a, as much as a, as a mustard seed, you could, you could say to that mountain and get lost and it's going to go cast into the sea. So how do we get more faith in our life? We're going to close with this verse in Romans chapter 10, verse 17. It says, so faith comes from hearing. That is hearing the good news about Christ. See, God's word, when we're reading scripture, when we're hearing scripture, that builds our faith, that strengthens our faith. In fact, right now, I believe that your faith is growing right now as you hear God's word. You can't see it. You might not be able to feel it. You say, I don't know. I don't think my faith is really growing. But when you go and you look back over the course of the year, you say, you know what? I do kind of have more faith than I did a year ago. It's a slow process, like how your muscles are getting stronger, your hair gets longer it's a slower process say oh well, I, I don't know I don't know if my faith is getting any stronger you stay in God's word and he says your faith will grow that's how we get more faith that comes from hearing God's word when we read scripture it gives me faith because I see these amazing things that God did when he parted the Red Sea, when he gave food to the hungry, when he gave water to those that were thirsty, when he healed the sick and the cripple, when he gave sight to the blind, both spiritually and physically, when he healed the he, uh, um, healed hearing, when he did all these things. And I look and I say, if God did that then, I believe that he could still do it now. I believe he could do it again. He's not finished in me he's not finished in you he's still working he's still perfecting our faith that he is able and he did it and he can do it again and Lord we come to you right now sometimes we have doubts sometimes we have anxieties sometimes we don't know what's going on and we get distracted by the problems in life but we put our faith in you we put our trust in you and if where you are right now you've never put your faith in Christ before scripture Scripture says that if you believe that Jesus is Lord and God raised him from the dead, you say with your mouth that Jesus is my Lord, then you will be saved because anyone who calls in the name of the Lord will be saved. And I believe in you. I believe you did miracles before. I've seen you work in other people's lives and you can do it again.